Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Eliza Byard, Executive Director of GLSEN, the Gay, Lesbian, and Straight Education Network. GLSEN is the leading national education organization focused on ensuring safe schools for all students. Eliza has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Eliza, for joining us today. Wonderful to be with you. So I'm going to ask a question with an obvious answer. Why do students require protection? Mm. Well, um, I think, unfortunately, part of the answer is students require protection because the adults in their lives haven't grown up enough, uh, in part. But, um, you know, for um, school communities, they have this amazing charge to um, bring students together, to bring young people together, to learn and to grow as community and as individual learners. The problem is that that community exists in the world and the world intrudes upon it. Um, and the, the reality of uh, the discrimination, the violence that LGBT people face in our society to this day um, affects how young people grow up uh, and the way that um, they're able to learn and the way, uh, the way their daily lives play out. Unfortunately, we know that today, four out of five LGBT students are still facing harassment on a regular basis at school. Those numbers are going down, and I'm proud of the progress we've made, but the urgency of the issue remains. And in many respects, although a, a school ought to be a safe environment, since it reflects the environment of the society in which we exist, those attitudes can bleed into those schools and give those children the, and adults as well, license to behave in ways that are just completely unacceptable and, and can be invisible to the adults around them. You know, a number of years ago, a study in Holland uh, illustrated a very important truth that I think helps illuminate how this works. Um, researchers there were trying to figure out how bullies choose their targets in a school. And I think the most important insight from this study was that Bullies are not motivated by personal animus. They're not picking on someone because they actually don't like them or they particularly care. What they found out was that bullies are really good at figuring out who isn't going to be defended by the group. Right. And unfortunately, that extends to the attitudes of the adults in the environment. Bullying is a dynamic that will always be with us. But the thing we can change is how adults respond. To this day, adults in the school environment are not consistently responding in an effective and even-handed way when homophobia, when transphobia plays out in the classroom. Um, and that's part of what our work is about. And what you see sometimes is this uh, sensibility that creeps into a school that, first of all, it's not us, mm. it's some other school. So people mm -hmm. aren't dealing proactively with the, the reality that it is us, mm -hmm. or that we're in a post-racial world, a, a post-homophobic world, when it, so we don't even have to deal with it, we don't have to discuss it. There's no proactive action. So that by the time people do respond, it's after the fact. Well, I think what's been interesting over the course of GLSEN's uh, existence, GLSEN's now in its 25th anniversary year, and um, when GLSEN got its start in 1990, one of the initial things that the organization had to do was actually convince people that there was such there was a, a thing there was a as problem. LGBT, right. not even that there was a problem, but that there was such a thing as an LGBT young person in a high school. The thought was that people don't become LGBT until they get to college. So GLSEN's first stages of existence were really about lifting up the fact there are young people in K through 12 school environments who are suffering as a result of the prejudice the, and the hatred uh, that exists in the world against LGBT people. And they're there, they're in your charge and they require your attention. Um, after that, the sort of the next phase of Glisten's work was about, and the answer to that is not to stay closeted until you get out of no. high school. Or to convert, I mean, there really was a moment in Glisten's history where the response was thought to be, actually what we need to do is either convert them to be straight <laughs> or get them to not be so flamboyant, and then they'll be okay. Imagine the message that that sends not only to the young person themselves, but to the whole school community. 
the key to your safety is just be quiet till you get out of here. And that was really um, a very, dis it's still something we hear today. At GLSEN, our purpose is to clear the space for every child to develop to be fully who they are and to be equally supported and have equal access to all the benefits of being in school. Um, down the line, this is about uh, having schools be places that foster community that contributes to a very different world for all of us when students graduate, a world where every person is respected and accepted for who they are and uh, who interacts with the world on their own merits. How do you convert society into a society which does respect and is open and allows children to grow into who they are? One of the most powerful things that GLSEN has had at its side throughout its history is the fact that people who really care about children's development understand why this is so important. When you demonstrate for people the incredible positive benefits of allowing children to be themselves as they learn and grow, and how that applies for LGBT youth specifically, and as you illustrate the concrete harms that come from not allowing that process to happen, any individual who is truly, truly committed to young people's healthy development wakes up to something, a new part of their charge. And um, we've always found the, the, the world of education professionals, by and large, um, has been open to our message and some of our most powerful partners over time. Talk about the various programs that, that you have within GLSEN. Certainly. I mean, our work uh, with schools is holistic in that we seek to, um, on, the, on the one hand, partner with the uh, sort of infrastructure of schools, the policies that set the stage, and, the, um, and then on the other, to work directly with all the people who make up the school community, the uh, educators who do the work every day in the classroom, in the hallways, and the students themselves who are participants in creating school culture. So our work spans uh, from uh, work directly with policy and education decision makers mm -hmm. through model policies and legislative initiatives to uh, professional development. We have professional development partnerships with districts to actually work work with the teachers. For and teachers and school administrators. Absolutely, and, and absolutely. And, um, and then work with students to um, really help them understand how they can play a role in making a change and frankly to learn from them about their changing daily reality and it informs what we do. Examples of some of our initiatives over time, um, GLSEN's National Day of Silence, which since 2001 has really reached hundreds of thousands of classrooms over time where students themselves stand up to illustrate the damaging impact of, of what's happening to LGBT people every day in the school environment. So you're raising consciousness, you're raising awareness, you're converting that consciousness and awareness into action. Into, uh, into action. You're engaging people in the development of the programs and the deployment of these programs uh, themselves. But you can't be in every single school district. How do you <laughs> ensure that your limited budget has maximal leverage where it is most needed? One of the things that has been tremendously important to us, a, sort of a twofold approach. One is that we have um, a very a, a dedicated in-house research capacity that both guides our choices programmatically and tracks progress over time. Um, we know when a, a brave individual is ready to stand up anywhere in the country, whether it's in New York City or in, in Alabama, we want to make sure that they have an action to take that we can point to as something that's going to make a concrete impact in their community. Um, we can't be in every school, but right. we can make sure that our resources, which are freely available, help individuals and communities know what to do next. One example I'd give, um, one of the GLSEN's most popular resources over time was something called the Safe Space Sticker. Still very, very popular today. Extremely simple, but the idea well, behind well, describe it. it. Describe sure. The safe space. So um, the safe space sticker is simply a, an identifiable sticker that says this is a safe space for everyone, including LGBT youth, um, or I am an ally in LGBT issues, or some way of letting students who see it know that the adult who's put it up is a resource and an ally. 
Behind that is the fact that we know that one of the single most important factors in a young person's experience at school is being able to identify a supportive adult. Right. So for us, the drive to get safe space stickers into schools across the country and let teachers and nurses and librarians know what a difference it makes um, is really part of laying the foundation of safety and acceptance for students everywhere. From um, 2010 through 2013, we actually launched a national campaign to get a safe space kit, a sticker and then a resource guide for the educators who use it, into every single middle and high school in the entire country. And we did. More than 60,000 schools. How do you interact with independent schools or religiously affiliated schools? Do you, is that a different experience for GLSEN than working in the public schools? Absolutely. Um, I, I would say a couple things about that. One is that GLSEN actually came out of the independent school environment. And, um, you know, the original name of GLSEN was the Gay and Lesbian Independent School Teachers Network. And uh, it was um, founded at an NAIS conference in New England and then became a volunteer idea that spread very quickly across the country to this day. Uh, we are fueled by the energy of volunteer chapters across the country um, who take this up in places from uh, Arizona to Tennessee to Nebraska. You know, there are GLSEN chapters working on the issue and many, many teachers. What's really interesting is that, and I say this often to set up an aspirational context, good schools deal with this issue proactively, well, and holistically. Good schools get good results by uh, opening their community to every member and allowing every member of the community to fully realize their potential. And uh, you know, one year uh, in the public school realm, we took a look at the top 25 in uh, U.S. News and World Reports um, uh, the best public colleges school. and universities no, or top public schools okay. in the country. So. We looked at the top 25 public schools in the country as listed in U.S. News and World Report. 19 of the 25 had a direct connection to GLSEN. So schools that want to be good at what they do, they recognize that there's no time for prejudice. There's no time for the distorting impact of homophobia and transphobia in the school. Things have evolved to such a point right now where we're, we're kind of at a tipping point for a lot of new activity mm. that is about yep. embracing. Um, you know, the, the, there were so many fundamental issues that had to be uh, dealt with, not to say that anything has really been resolved, right, but, right. but just to surface. And, and then there, th there's a lot of energy that seems to be pent up that's being released right now. Yes. There's an incredible moment right now. You know, we've spent a lot of time from, I would say, from about 2000 until 2008, f figuring out what works. What's going to change things? What are the ways that um, you can really come in and contribute to positive school climate transformation around these issues? And we've identified a number of uh, really important central school-based interventions that make a huge difference. And we, in each case, we sort of take this, we track its impact over time. We've done a lot of research and evaluation and published pretty widely on this variety of interventions. Now is the moment there's a chance to take them to scale. And um, that is where the parent advocate, where the individual teacher, where the school board that's ready to really try something to make a huge difference is in a position to move. And one of the things that I think has been um, really interesting for GLSEN in working broadly with public school systems across the country is you see such interesting variation in their willingness to engage, but in the context of this baseline commitment that there is, there is a public charge here that needs, to be, that needs to be dealt with. So what's the next step for GLSEN? What we find now is that we've been able to demonstrate that over the course of 25 years, these strategies have moved the needle on an issue that everyone thought was completely intractable. Right. We have, since 1999, been tracking 
uh, LGBT student experience in this country, and we can point to the ways that it is concretely and now demonstrably getting better. In places that act, these things are getting better. Talk about the broad range of different programs that you have and, and, and the broad range of activities. Sure. There are resources to empower individuals to take action, so the Safe Space Kit, or something like Ready, Set, Respect, which is our toolkit for elementary school educators um, that are there to, for someone to pick up, learn from, and figure out how they themselves might make a difference individually in their community. Um, there are policy and legislative initiatives we undertake at all levels of government, whether it's the local school board, state government, or in the halls of Congress, where we're trying to put in place some of the policy infrastructure that we know helps make a difference from a student in a school. When that policy is well implemented and makes it down to the school level, this is going to make a difference. Um, we've been involved in um, broad scale efforts to reach uh, educators through professional development initiatives and programs um, that bring a whole community along in understanding how their practice as educators is enhanced when they take these issues on and we want to give them uh, the awareness and the skills to do so. Um, and we're involved in public education and work directly with students to also move those issues along and to really partner with students themselves who are some of the best advocates for them, uh, their, own, their own lives, uh, with things like GLSEN's National Day of Silence, which we were just starting out with when I joined GLSEN at the turn of the century. Um, <laughs> and amazing you can say that. But yeah. I, you know, when I first came to GLSEN, we were just starting our work on the Day of Silence. And GLSEN's National Day of Silence is actually now pretty much a part of the school calendar each April. Um, but a moment to focus each year on the damaging impact of this problem and the ways we can turn it around. You know, uh, from 2008 until last year, uh, we had an Ad Council campaign running, really targeting uh, a message to 13 to 16 year olds to get them to rethink their unthinking use of anti-LGBT language. Things like the phrase, that's so gay, or the word fag. What does that mean to someone? And what was amazing is that among that age range, when you reach them directly with humor, right. direct humor, uh, we actually were able to have a very concrete and significant impact on student attitudes towards the use of that language, to get them to stop saying it and stop saying it was okay, or it didn't mean anything to say that's okay. Right. So, um, and I, I think that also illustrates something very important to me about um, doing this kind of work and the way we go about it. It's really important to me that we know for ourselves and for others who might take this up, that it really means something that will have an impact in the world. So mm -hmm. talk, about, talk about that impact, mm -hmm. that it has impact. How do you know that you've been successful? Great. Um, it's important to me that we be able to really know and understand how we're having an impact on the world and be able to measure that impact over time. With, with our research into LGBT student experience since 1999, we not only can look at the correlation between a student's experience and the actual intervention, but really look over time at what's happening in our schools. And what is so moving to me is that over the course, say from 2007 to today, we can see that it's really getting better. We can see that things are changing, that the use of the language is decreasing, that we're getting to the point where in some places we may be uh, in a position to say, cross the finish line in a few years of bringing LGBT student experience on a par with that of their peers. So there really is a level playing field for LGBT students. Now, there are only a few places where that's in sight, but that's our goal, that everyone's working on the same page and um, with the same supports, with the same opportunities, and with the same sense of joy of being part of a community. Phenomenal, phenomenal work impacting so many students. Eliza Byard, thank you so much for sharing the work of GLSEN with us, and thank you for your insights. Thank you for the opportunity.